Some iPhone photographers are concerned that Reflex's 240mm super telephoto lens only works with the iPhone's 5x telephoto camera because its 12 megapixel resolution just isn't high enough for large prints. So today I'm going to address those concerns by printing some super telephoto images at different sizes. There are loads of factors that play a role in the quality of your prints, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to discard most of them. And I'm only going to address those that directly relate to how sharp and detailed your super telephoto prints will look. One of the issues, and I think this is the main issue, at the heart of this super telephoto 12 megapixel print size concern is DPI and PPI. PPI is pixels per inch. It refers to how many pixels there are per inch of a digital image, whereas DPI is the printed equivalent. It refers to how many dots of ink a printer lays down per inch of paper. And the conversion is typically one to one. So 100 DPI equals 100 PPI. Let's take a look at this in Photoshop by coming to image and then image size we can see the dimensions in pixels. We have 3024 by 4032, which is just over 12 million pixels or 12 megapixels. And the PPI, the pixels per inch is 240. But this isn't really saying anything because we haven't specified a print size. You can't know what the PPI or the DPI are unless you specify a physical width and height and pixel dimensions just don't do that. Take these two resolutions, for example. These tell you nothing about how big these displays are. We need to change pixels to inches. And now it makes sense. We also need to turn off resampling, but more on that in a moment. So with this amount of pixels, we can print 12.6 by 16.8 inches at a resolution or pixels per inch of 240. Is that good? Well, most people would like 300 DPI. This means that there's 300 dots of ink per inch of paper. And what that means is when you look at a print closely, your eyes can't perceive the individual dots. So I could just change this 240 to 300, right? Well, no, because look at what's happened to our dimensions. They've gotten smaller. And that's because when you increase the PPI here or the DPI, you don't add pixels here. We haven't added an extra 60 pixels per inch. We've simply packed more pixels in to those same inches. So the dimensions have gotten smaller. So at 12 megapixels, if you want that magical 300 DPI, this is the maximum size that Photoshop tells us that we can print. And if I wanted a poster, say a large poster, let's change this to 48. You can see here that the resolution, the pixels per inch drops to 84. And this is what people are concerned about. The larger you print, the less DPI. So your prints could look pixelated. But I've got some good news for you. And this is the key takeaway to all of this. It depends on how closely you view your prints. For example, you typically look at smaller prints really closely. So they need a higher DPI of say 300 or more to appear sharp. But as prints get bigger, you typically view them further away. For example, you wouldn't look at a poster at the same distance you would look at a small postcard. So posters require a lower DPI because when you're looking at a print further away, your eyes can't distinguish fine details, so they still appear sharp despite the lower DPI. But the best example of this are billboards. You typically look at a billboard from at least 10 meters, but often much further away. So billboards only require a DPI of around 10 to 20. But I need to show you the elephant in the room, which throws a large spanner into all of this, which is called resampling. So back in Photoshop, if I change this from pixels to inches, and then I change 240 PPI to 300, the dimensions don't shrink. In fact, I could have that poster that I wanted, 
at 300 dpi. So what is going on here? Well, you get different types of resampling, but I found Preserve Details 2.0 to be the best one for a significant resolution increase. But just keep in mind, and this is why this noise reduction slider has popped up, that when you use Preserve Details 2.0, because it uses a technique called interpolation, as you increase the resolution, it can do so at the expense of detail. So your images can look soft, which is <laughs> counterproductive to this entire thing. And it can also amplify the noise that's already in your image. So you get the noise reduction slider, and you can use this preview here to find the right balance between the amount of noise reduction and the amount of perceived detail that you want. And you might find the printing company that you use also uses a form of resampling. For example, it might upscale lower resolution images to 300 dpi automatically, or it could leave them as is. And it's definitely worth checking so you know how to prepare your images and you know exactly what results you're gonna get. Speaking of results, let's look at them. All of these prints were done at a budget consumer grade company. So they come with a few artifacts, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not concerned. This is a 12 by eight inch print of a macro photo, and it looks phenomenally sharp close up. At 12 by eight inches, the image has been cropped slightly as the aspect ratios are different. But even after cropping, you still get a DPI of 336. However, at this size, the printing company sets its printers to 300 DPI. So those extra 36 pixels per inch have been ignored or downsampled. I don't know which is which. I asked and the print staff knew the DPI of the printers was 300, but they didn't know anything else, bless them, which it's not ideal for this video. I would have liked to have known, but it's not the end of the world. We'll have to just do it the old fashioned way and look at the prints with our eyes and decide whether or not they are detailed enough. Next, I have 16 by 12 inch prints. And while they aren't as finely sharp as the macro examples, they're still highly, highly detailed. And one of the keys to this level of detail is the fact that these images were shot in well-lit conditions. In these conditions, your iPhone's camera captures sharper and more detailed images because the light allows the super telephoto lens and the iPhone's five times camera lens to resolve finer details with better contrast. More light also means that your iPhone's tiny image sensor receives a stronger signal for cleaner, higher quality images. Next, I have a 16 and a half by 23.4 inch print. And at this size, with its viewing distance, I would have expected the printing company to have dropped the DPI to between 150 to 200, which our 12 megapixel image is comfortably within. So I'm very pleased to report, and you'll be very pleased to hear, that it looks really good. When you get right up close, like way closer than intended, you can see that the larger print isn't as finely detailed as the smaller prints, but it doesn't need to be. From a fair and reasonable viewing distance, even if this was 300 dpi, my eyes couldn't make out the extra detail anyway. And even though the printing company's staff didn't know, I think I can prove that the dpi has been dropped because I also have a 48 megapixel upsampled version of this print. And I can't tell, I'm looking at the most detailed part of this print, which is the rider's glove, and I can't see any difference whatsoever. And you know what? I've not labeled these. I don't know which one's which. I could have showed you the 48 megapixel version one before. They look exactly the same. And that's, that's the whole point that I'm making. But we're not finished. Let's roll out the big Mamas, these are 60 by 40 inch prints. This is over a meter and a half by one meter. And the DPI of the 12 megapixel version is 67. Whereas the 48 megapixel upsampled version is 134. 
The problem is I don't know which is which, so I don't know whether I'm supposed to stand three meters away or one and a half meters away. But that's not really a problem, is it? It's actually a great thing. The fact that I can print 12 megapixel super telephoto images this big and it looks this good is brilliant. Who cares what the DPI is? If I knew what the DPI was, would it change how detailed I felt the photo was? No. So I hope this has alleviated any concerns over the super telephoto lenses, 12 megapixel resolution and print size. And here are some key takeaways from this video. 12 megapixels is enough to print very large because DPI is directly related to viewing distance. So when you see your DPI drop as you increase the print size, don't worry. If you would like more resolution and DPI, you can upsample, but be ready for very large files. And it's probably not even worth doing because printing companies will use their own DPI anyway. And from normal viewing distances, your eyes won't be able to see the extra resolution. But this does introduce a new problem. And this is the biggest problem of this whole thing. What am I supposed to do with these enormous prints? These, these things weren't cheap. I'm serious. 